victims of violence and witnesses of war. The United Nations says that of children refugees, nearly three-fourths of them are under 11 years old. When you see Therefore, the danger hundreds of thousands have faced, you might wonder how can parents risk it all with their children? Well, they told me that Syria is simply far worse, far more dangerous. We are from Task Force GLM. We are a non-profit organization to the truest extent. Every single member of our team is an unpaid volunteer that sacrifices their time and their efforts for the sake of various humanitarian causes. Our team consists of various members from our congregation of various disciplines. We have teachers, we have preachers, we have politicians, and we have parents, and we have children, all who gather together to work hard to, for various humanitarian causes. The cause that we're speaking about today is the uh, orphanage housing 240 Syrian children. I'd like to introduce you to one of the founding members of Task Force GLM. With me is Ishfaq Ahmed, who is a member of the GLM congregation. And I'd like to ask you, Ishfaq, what was the impetus? What was the reason? What made you set up Task Force GLM? So why did GLM get involved? So the Syrian conflict kicked up in 2012. Uh, the reality is it actually took us a must two years to realise the extent of the problem. After a visit to Syria in 2014 by the centre manager, we came back and said that we need to do something. This is not just a Syrian problem or a Turkey problem, no, it's as a Muslim, we need to do something. At the time we were focusing more on Pakistan and certain issues like that, and then we realised this is something that we need to deal with and we got involved. Also we have uh, brother Imran who is a local business person and has been involved in the project or almost from its outset. What made you as a business person who's probably very busy with your business get involved in a project like this? Well, originally I just wanted to donate to the project um, and inadvertently just became more and more involved with it. Um, hence why I'm on this trip. And what I try to do is look through the numbers and make sure that anyone who does donate, um, just to ensure that it's efficient the way the funds are used. So maybe I can bring a little bit of the, um, you know, what I use in my business on a day to day and sit on the, uh, on, on, on with the team and basically go through the figures and ensure that everything is transparent and um, we then publish reports on the website to make sure that everyone can um, see exactly where the money is going and we negotiate quite hard with our distribution partners Human Appeal and ensure that we get 100% donation um, on most of the projects that we work on particularly this one and um, bread inside Syria as you've got on your hoodie there. <laughs> and one of the reasons we can do the 100% is because in fact the whole team is on a voluntary basis, no one takes a penny from the project. That makes it easier for us. Alhamdulillah. Also, we have uh, Brother Majid Mahmoud, who is a councillor for the city of Birmingham. What makes you, as a politician, get involved in, in projects like this that have scope internationally beyond your, your normal remit? I mean, not only am I a politician, I'm also a humanitarian. And as a Muslim, we've got a duty and need a responsibility to look after our brothers and sisters wherever they are across the world. And this appeal, this uh, G um, task force set up predominantly to help with the Syrian project. In Syria, people have simply forgotten it's the worst humanitarian crisis since the Second World War. More than six million people have been displaced uh, due to the conflict in Syria. I get approached by a number of people, both within the war I represent Hajjim and outside within the city of Birmingham, wanting to do more, but also wanting some open and transparency in terms of the projects where they're donating money. here. There you get a glimpse of. Uh, the, the members, the key members of Task Force GLM and I would implore each and every one of you watching this video to come on board and assist us. We could do with uh, a lot more people supporting us on these various projects. Jazakumullah This project is the largest Syrian orphanage in Turkey and it's the first of its kind. It's unique in the sense that it's completely family run, which means it's not a corporate charity program and there aren't any overpaid officials. This means that you don't get the wastage of valuable resources and the inefficiencies. You don't get that cold, compassion lacking facility where a child is just a number. It does mean that resources are highly valued and efficiently used and that every child matters and is loved and cared for. This facility was was set up by a mother and daughter team. Um, the mother whose name is Samira and the daughter who's Manar. 
It, it started out um, by Sister Samira um, taking in four orphans initially and uh, housing them safely in Turkey and that then grew from 80, from 4 to 80, then to 106, which they currently house. However, the facility does have capacity for 240 orphans. Um, however, it lacks the funding to, to be able to accommodate them at this stage. As you know, the war in Syria has ravaged on for over seven years and there has never been a greater need for institutions like this very orphanage based here in Gaziantep, Turkey, only a stone throw away from the Syrian border for Syrian orphan children to be housed here and avoid and escape the trauma and the, the difficulties of the refugee camps or the homelessness uh, or the torture or the capture or the fear and be housed here in the environment of safety in the environment of love and warmth and there isn't anybody who knows this better than Mohammed Damur at Dar es Salaam Orphanage. The reason that we have the, this center here is like to protect kids, to give them love, hope, uh, let them dream again and um, feel safe again. Poverty is trapping tens of thousands of Syrian refugee children into a life of labor. Syrian children are vulnerable to exploitation. After suffering years of war, these children are on their own. Their parents and those who would have cared for them are gone. If after having seen this video, you've not been moved to contribute from your time or your wealth. Um, I have to make you aware that there isn't anybody else. It's only you and I. The, the orphanage itself has been at the brink of closure a number of times where, where the management have mentioned to, to the, the orphan children and, and uh, the widows that that's it, pack your things, we're going to have to close down because they've run out of funds. So. I implore you to dig deep um, and, and look into your heart and see if there's something that you can do to support these orphans for, for years to come. If you can support them with your ongoing uh, contribution in terms of wealth or your ongoing contribution in terms of time, whether it's fundraising for us or it's simply creating awareness for this cause. One day something goes viral the next day, we completely forget it. 